we we'll dive a little bit deeper inside the VU. And because it's a lot of different components, I think start with the terrains in Terrain Editor. It's the best place. The application actually started originally as a student project to create fractal terrains. And next, it's grow up to be shareware and grow up to be this application. So I think it's a good place for us to start as well. And as we start, you can see in our applications, we have our ground, which represent as infinity plane. And what I mean by infinity, if we take our camera and start moving, keep on going, it's it's never end. It's actually, will, you can keep on going and going. <laughs> it will generate a new and new. Of course, we can take change shapes. We can add different materials to this, but we also can modify slightly to this terrain to become a little bit more as a planet. And to do this, we're just going to file options and in options we want to go in a units and right below here you can see is have spherical sand. So let's enable this. Notice we have it 6,400 kilometers. This is about earth size by original, but it's best way to see curvature if we change. So let's go ahead and set to one kilometer, click OK. And as we're doing, you can see right here, we have it, our curvature. So now we can move camera and interesting things, because as we move in camera, it's kind of stuck to this curvature. But here's the things we cannot go all the way down this or other end. We could go up and rotate, but we kind of stuck to this curvature. Also, this is nice if you just want to create like alt, high altitude curvature and don't care about anything under. But if you want to create like asteroid or planet itself, then what do we want to do? Going back to our options units and we want to check and right here, use it planetary terrain. So let's go ahead, enable. You can also modify altitude and longitude, but we'll set zero, zero, click OK. And now you notice we actually have it, our planet. Of course, we can take our camera all the way out of there and point uh, with our... Hmm? Alas, oh, there you go. Yeah, and point to our planet. And sometimes if I lost, I'll just try... There you go, use it, this navigation. So now you can see we have it, our planet is kind of hanging in the air. Of course, we can go to the ground and modify all materials. And you can have fun with materials by using displacement or any other ones. And they will kind of modify a little bit shape of the planet. You probably also notice we have all this kind of atmosphere around. And a problem with this atmosphere, because if we go to atmosphere editor, we still have it a little bit on a sky high. It's eight kilometers. It's way high, yes, versus ours. So we can drop this down on all these altitudes, make much closer to the surface. Then that should resolve a lot of problems in our atmosphere. There you go. Kind of like this. And we, of course, can play more with this atmosphere to create it. But it is in a time will we start going on atmosphere editor. Well, let's go ahead, cancel for now. And I'm going to reset by click on a new and we'll just open with new atmosphere. So this is just interesting way you can play with terrain. So you can see how powerful it is. But of course, for us, what is most interesting, it is modifying small terrains. And it's probably what I suggest. You can play around this. But always when you start, start with this step. Step to create it as simple terrains. So if we look on our left side, you'll notice we have an icon with kind of mountains and a dot. This blue dot, or actually it's more purplish blue, I think, dots represent that if we right click, we had expanded menu that we can select additional options. So let's click and you notice we have our high field terrain, procedural terrain, fractal terrain basis. We have it a low terrain that already pre-made and we have it a real world. So let's select one high field terrain and we'll just create this and put on a side right here. 
If you look closer, you'll see the grid. And this is triangles. It's how the polygons build with this. And notice they're all exactly the same size. So they're exactly the same everywhere. So let's let's see what's happening when we create a procedural terrain. And we'll move these procedurals on the side. Notice the triangles is changing. Some of them smaller, some of them bigger. So let's take camera and bring closer to this terrain. Okay. And look on this. Now we have it smaller, a little bit bigger and far away going from camera. The triangles become or polygons become bigger and bigger. And this is a very nice options for the procedurals because resolution of the terrain its change depend on how close camera to the terrain this is helpful because then you can create very highly detailed terrains without overload your system with a lot of polygons beside if you render this way and we'll just take camera come closer to normal terrain and we can preview let me make this a little bit bigger and you can see it is does not have it very many details. Okay, let's go a little bit higher to our mountain. Like this. And we'll preview and you can see it's kind of look at this. It's a smooth, smooth mountain. We could increase resolution for this. But in this case, we actually need to go inside the editor. And inside the editor, like in our first video, we just need to go and click and increase terrain resolution. And by doing this, you can see we can add a little bit more details. But it is a fixed resolution. So if we, we take closer our camera, we still again need increase. And this is will need increase for all, all terrain. The standard terrain, it's very nice to use because they don't require recomputing time when you render them. And if you use them like on a background or maybe in some area where you have plants or other objects around, when you don't really care about how close resolution it is. But we also have a procedure terrain here. And let's take our main camera and move closer. So if we come to this resolution and preview, you can see it's already much higher details. Look on those details. Okay, next, let's go take our camera and bring very, very close to the, our terrain, like right here. And if we look on this resolution, you can see it's still quite a bit detailed resolution because it is procedurals. It's a base on a fractal. The closer we get it, the resolution and details will add it more and more. It seems like it's best solution because we have it, um, nice options with the details. We have it, uh, management on the memory. But the biggest problem with this, it is unpredictability. So it's meaning if we have it another terrain, standard terrain, we can have it fixed model. So it will be look exactly the same with this because it's change and change resolution. When we come closer, it's look one way. Maybe other when we create another ones will look different. So the shape slightly will change. We could have some ability of con we do have ability to control this if we're going in a function editor and have a special way to use it image and a fractal on top. So we have it some flexibility with this. But again, that is uh, kind of with the draw randomizations of the terrain as the because fractal is different in this case so the both working that's the reason why we both have them here okay let's make a camera and we'll move this camera away let's preview what else we have it if we're going and click on preload our terrain you can interesting right here you can notice we have it pre-made high field terrain we have it our procedural terrain and we also have it infinity terrain. So the height field terrain, it's same as we used before. If we just go ahead, click and open, you can see the shape already pre-made. Let's take our camera and come closer. Sometimes it's easy to select here camera. And if we come closer to this terrain, let's bring up because it is, does not have it um, edge. Well, it's have it edges, so we'll come closer. And you can see 
it is pre-made shape of this. Um, we will make some advanced terrain later, but utilizing different applications like World Machine, Gaia, or any other ones, where you can pre-shape and make very complex terrain and materials and import and use them inside the application. Or we can um, just take it even a funny stamps and creating like a school looking island. So that is nice and beauty about this, but you can see they're pre-made. So let's go try next. We'll go click and we'll just again preload it. And it's time. Let's go take procedural terrain. And I'm just different. Take di um, another looking. And this is a pre-made shape. If we look but problem is, as I said before, if we create another one, it looks somewhat similar, but will look different. But again, that is a nice procedure terrain. If we get closer, we'll get it much more resolutions and everything. So you can preload them and you can also create your own terrain, save and use it in your future work. Another one to use sites Infinity and Infinity is a little bit different animal. At the beginning, we'll look on this ground. You remember when we can create ground plane. So let me go ahead and delete all of these four terrains because we don't need them for now. And what's happening if we create infinity? We'll right click, let's go preload and we'll select infinity and let's create maybe something like this. Notice it has come up and says you're creating procedural terrain and this will replace our ground. So it's meaning this infinity ground will replace with the displacement kind of material. Okay, let's go ahead, click OK. And creating infinity, realistic atmosphere renderer should... Okay, yes, we'll just click OK on this case. Notice what's happening here. Now we have it, all of these mountains developed for us by using displacement. Well, we'll take camera. Oops, okay, I don't want to select everything, yes. I just want to select my camera right here. And if we go up and look, and you can see even here, we have it a beautiful, look at this, how beautiful mountains and everything created. And this is procedural infinity terrain. So it's meaning if I set my camera and animate it to go, and it will go forever. So it's kind of nice. And other interesting things about this, because it is a seed based infinity, when we come back, the shape of terrain still be there because it is based on a fractal and it's already have a seed number. So it will be look same on a big details, not on teeny tiny, but on a big, it will look same. So this is a nice way to create. And if you, for example, take this infinity terrain and apply to our teeny tiny planet, you can have a very cool looking asteroid. Okay, so let's go ahead. We kind of fun with this. We created, we know those different terrains. Next, let's go create new. Well, actually not create new. I want just to reset it. So we'll go ahead, reset this. And then next we're going to, again, right click. And let's look what's happening when we use the world. And this is option allowed you to take world on earth and map it directly to your place. So let's look right here what we have it. You can see we have a geographical view, longitude, latitude. So you can actually go in and find specific place on Earth. You will have some limitations here because it is depend on what resolution when it will pull out from the map website. But again, you can select it and you can notice if we go down below, it's tell you um, what layer is displayed resolution to import remember bigger size sometimes you can, you can shrink as well as well have an area to import and of course you can modify you can scale the square make it bigger smaller depending on what area like right here which area you want to do it and it it's easy and you can import procedures or you can import as the f standard terrain and you can see right here, I selected. Let's take my camera. And notice how terrain is up. The reason because it is also based on natural altitude. And I did not specify put it on a sea level. And whatever map we selected, it was high in a mountain. So, so in this case, we'll just need a match. We need to bring our camera a little bit above the sea level. 
Okay, there you go. Here our terrain, and we can also look a little bit down and see this is a real world terrain. Okay, we do create it map and specify here. And if we open for edit because it's procedural terrain, we can actually preview inside here. Okay, let me go ahead, kind of rotation. And if you don't remember, hold down Alt or Option key and your right button on the mouse, you can rotate your middle button if you hold. It will be pan around and your right button will zoom in and out. And this is all work while you press down Alt or Option key. This is default mapping on keyboard. Of course, you may already modify to whatever you likeness, but in my case, it's all vanilla installation. So it's what we're going to use. OK, and right here you can see we have a terrain and it is procedural. Well, as we were open now terrain editor, let's look what we have inside here. The terrain editor on your right side where you have those tabs, they will be a little bit different depending on what type of terrain you're working, procedural or a standard. Because we start working with procedural right now, let's check. The top and side, they will be the same, same like on a button, the selection, they will be exactly the same. So don't worry about that. Let's look what we have in our top bar and notice right there we have our empty terrain so we can create brand new terrain. We can save it, load it, we can use configurations. As we're using configuration, you have the dot on the top. It's meaning again, if we click, it's have it extended where we can modify. We can switch between high field and procedural so you can go back and forward. Like for example, where we go high field, this field now will switch to the different. You can see preloading as a high field. And of course, we can also verify because we have changed our tabs. Notice we have the graph paint in effect and before we did not have it. Okay, let's go back, switch to procedural terrain. Let's take a little bit readjustments and now we have it also zones. We will explain about zones a little bit later. Next, we have it also just normal configuration and if we click, we have it our symmetrical skin or infinity. Remember before we have this infinity terrain, so we can change this symmetrical. It's kind of interesting because it is will create from top. And as well, if we look, see, it's created from the bottom. So it is kind of symmetrical ways to do. This is an interesting way to create like floating islands in the air, you know, like those in the avatars, so we can do those ones. But also, we have it just a skin only, so it will overlay and have it empty inside. Otherwise, it will create it um, linked together the polygons. So let's go back. We'll uncheck our symmetrical, so nothing there. Just normal terrain. Next, we have it our options. And by the way, if you need these options, you can go and enable the tooltip. If you go File, Option. And in general, down below, you'll have it enable tooltips right here. And this is help you when you move your mouse over, it just can pop up and tell you what that functions can do. Okay, so next we have to review, we have it kind of click and preview from top down so we can switch. We also can, okay, let me go around here, enable preview with a properly scenery. So for example, if we have a plant or we have a building or some object, it will show everything. And if we enable right here, you can see it's showing our position of the camera, showing lighting and everything. This is very useful in a way when you start modeling. For example, I put it in one area house and I want pre-build my terrain around the house. So this object will be visible here. Let me show you what I mean by this. Let's go cancel this and we'll just go create the orb. We'll take this orb quite a bit large because I want preview. We'll bring this up above our surface and let's just click on the bottom on the left button. It's called drop object. This is just take and place it on the terrain below. Now we can go back to edit our terrain and see, there you go. We have our orbit orb right here displaying for us. So in this case, if we're going and we use 
um, like brush or other tools, for example, we can easy just going and build, see, around the subject. We can create specific um, terrains, which is kind of nice. The when we always when we enable these options, it would it will take some rendering power, so you will see some slow down. Because of this, I don't use it all the time, just only when is necessary. Okay, next we have our polygon or show wireframes. If we click, you can preview amount of polygons. And this is a very useful tool. And mostly when you start using retopology or pushing some of those polygons, moving out effect. But generally, you can also preview and see the way the polygons mostly happen in some cases if you look like closer you can see how the stretching right here happen on polygons and anytime when you have it stretching and you have it non-fractal like image based texture it's meaning this texture will be stretching and you will see kind of not very pleasant lines so in this case you want to do retopology or other tools to smooth a little bit out and properly distribution so this wireframe it's help us with properly mapping texture on top of our object okay next what we have after this it's a showing specular lighting and this is help us to kind of bring a little bit more um, shape to our object because whatever we see here if we look on this this is two-dimensional we see three-dimensional object and two-dimensional space and sometimes it's very hard to see the shape of the object. Specular lighting help us kind of to preview with the slides to see a little bit more shape. Like for example, without this area will look a little bit flat. Look what's happening with specular lighting. Oh, now we can see more details with this. So it's a help again with the building, with creating our terrain. The next we have the texture map it's same as we applied in the picture and this is usually just take a texture what we applied and showing inside the editor this is will help to work if you have it in some area like maybe green stuff you want to put it on a hills or rocks so you kind of go in and play with this the nice things about this texturing how it's applied inside this tool if we look on the right side you can notice we also have the brushes and some of the brushes allowed us to actually paint texture on top of our terrain. Okay, next we have our clipping zone. And clipping, well, let, let me show you. So right here, let's create one of the uh, zoom out. Yeah, we'll zoom out right here. Hmm, let me create maybe a more interesting. See if we can create something here. Okay, I think this will work. Okay, now we have it playing with the up and downs. Okay, when we enable clipping, you kind of see some of those white lines, but this is planes on top and bottom. If we go down to altitude, you'll notice we have it sliders and also kind of representation. So if I take minimum and start moving, notice this clipping plane is move. And if we go to the top, see how it's cutting off? This is kind of clipping off our bottom we could use this element to actually remove some of the terrains like top or bottom or make it flat so let's see what's happened here if i go all the way up to this area and i click ok now if we're going and preview terrain inside here you can already see what's going on look on this empty spot let's take out my camera moving around and you can see the cuts off the one is what we did with clipping plane so we can apply clipping plane to cut but it's a bit more than just cut because with the clipping plane we can also lock some details for example i got my bottom clipping plane yes let's go now take top and bring top clipping plane down so, and I'll bring maybe around here. I, I don't know why I'm just, uh, there you go. Okay, like around here, probably. Okay, nine, nine meters. Ah, that should actually work. 
then we can take our brush and let us um, let me show I want constraint so when I did this we have a checkbox one be sure it says constraint to clipping range and now if I do anything notice it does not do anywhere except the area that inside clipping so in this case I can actually going and say okay I want this increased size so I'm increasing but if you notice it does not go higher than top plane yes but it's also going not lower than other ones this has allowed me to create some very interesting editing or fix in one area and we'll come back like for example to the house you remember I said before you can put house on this case you can take the plane clip to the level of the house and painting so the your mountains does not overlap over your house so it will be just going no higher than this but when you're done with this if we go on back and look what we have here because clipping plane is enabled you can see it's got everything except those areas <laughs> where we had yes so let's let's fix this we don't need it that way on this case we can go move our clipping plane up and down restore and uncheck and now we're back to our normal terrain with exception our editing that we've done with constraining of clipping planes okay next we have our options copy paste the just normal effect zoom in and out by using just a buttons this way we already look on increasing resolution and decreasing if you perform this increase decrease resolution on a procedure or terrain that won't affect terrain resolutions in the end but it will affect terrain in the preview and sometimes it will make different I notice when I work with procedural terrains and I increase the resolutions here I can see sometimes a little bit more details but again it will be applied only in here so it won't be applied in a final terrain okay next we also have another options here it is a resample terrain it's again when we have the resolution remember with the triangles it's kind of try to rework with this options invert and invert kind of cool options because you can easiest way to make lake what is meaning by this uh, let me show you let's go ahead cancel this one and we'll just create a new terrain normal terrain okay uh, what oh, I did not create the right one let me close this one Oops, sphere delete my sphere I want to create normal terrain okay there you go and my terrain is teeny tiny right here on the end you remember okay so let me increase a little bit in size just pop you know what we can actually de delete that one we'll take main camera bring closer there you go okay so let's go ahead we open back our terrain editor and if we click on invert you see how it's changing we'll click OK and if we take our main camera and look over this is like almost to create a perfect lake look on this go on top look down and there you go we have our perfect down for the lake all of course what we needed we need just create a layer of the water and here we have it, our lake well let's have a little bit trick if you want to create lake without infinity but for now you can see how we created very easy way this okay let's destroy this one let's go back to our terrain and of course we switch our terrain to now standard terrain but it's okay most of this does not change and of course if we need it remember we can always go and switch directly to procedural terrain if we need it inside so next we have our retopologies which has allowed us to take those ugly triangles and distributed them properly as well we have an extended canvas because right now it's one size and based on this we actually can select and say which directions we want to make our terrain bigger kind of like not stretching but add additional polygons or just grow in specific area so I don't want to do this yet 
And this is some of the functionality that I mentioned, will mention right now. We won't totally cover here. For that, we will have a different type of the class, more advanced inside the terrain editor. Okay, we next have a force 2D. This is help if you create some 3D object like inflate or other ones. And creating 3D terrains sometimes take quite a bit resources on the polygons. Um, by forcing 2D, it will minimize this. You won't have any overhanging, but it will dramatically decrease some of the number of the polygons. And our next one, it is um, map preview of procedurals. If again, we work with procedurals in one, we'll see how the procedural materials will apply to our terrain. So this is our top. Let's go on the left and you can see we have it our reset all painting everything if we need it. So it's just a simple remove everything remove 3D, 2D. We also have it right now edges, zero edges. So let's just uh, inverse again from what we had before. I'm just inversing to our mountain here. And if we disable zero edge, you can see how they will become like almost piece of terrain was cut off, yes, and bring out. Sometimes it's maybe what you wanted, but in many times, maybe you just want kind of like heal or other things then this zero edge will apply. Under this, we have a preset to specific type of the terrains, mountain. You have it also our peaks. We just kind of I like create peaks when we have the far away reach of the mountain. So they work like perfect. We have it also our the eroded type terrain. This one is we have it also canyon. Notice on eroded, we have just only one eroded. We don't have it effect of the erosion that we have it in normal standard terrain. If you remember from our previous video, we was looking on this. And till we here, let's just very fast look. So we switch to high field or standard terrain. And you'll notice right here, we have it our erosion, but now it is not just eroded terrain like before. Now it's have effect of the erosion. And if we click, you have a lot of presets like mountain, all of this. We can modify also some of this erosion effect, but be careful when you use it because it's very CPU intensive. So when you create this and create high resolution, it is will take actually quite a bit computing time to readjust this. Okay, let's go ahead back. We'll switch to actually, you know what? Let's stay for high field for a second because this is will be kind of fun. So we have it another one's edge we've done before. We have it our mounts, dunes. We also can create just iceberg look, lunar effect with the craters. And one below, this is the picture. So we actually can take some picture and use it. The pictures, it's usually, you can use color, but it will convert black and white. Whereas with the luminosity highest, like white color will be top and a black is below. This is nice because you can actually create high map field map in another applications and import and using them here. So let's go ahead, click on the pictures and you notice we have an import terrain with the icon on the bottom where we can preload our images. And if we click, we can open multiple right here. We have a terrain, the brushes where we can use it. But I think let's go just take a, one of this foot we enable here. And if we we have it, our footprint. Of course, by using options on the side, we can flip around, change the direction. We can inverse if we want to be like an island of the footprints. We can also modify mixing mode, planned, add. Like for example, you can see it's have the rocks just added to this. If you're familiar a little bit with the Photoshop, some of those or any other image editing software, some of this will be very similar like max minimum on this. Well, let's go just a blend for now. Okay, we'll select blend. And you also have it right here sliders where you can say, do you want more terrain? Or for example, we can blend a little bit more. And if we use it just a little bit, we still have it some of this distortion on the sides, but it is applied general shape for us. And we have additional options we can modify like flip, duplicate it and other effect. When we're done, let's go ahead and click OK. And look what we have here. We're creating 
our step. I do like create like pirate island. So usually I'm taking, have it like picture of the school, you know, just create school, create like a school here, island, put it on the ground, put it water, palms, and you have a perfect pirate island, school island to create it from this. So you can see, and of course, the, you have additional properties below, but some of them, uh, like spline, you will need to use it spline tool on the side right here. We can create splines and modify terrain work with splines. Spline is good to create uh, like a riverbed, roads, um, some other, maybe even mountains or some other effects or a place at specific way, ecosystem. That is advanced subject, but just let you know, this is what is gray out because we don't use its splines yet. So this is what we we'll look on those tabs. Next, let's look what we have it on our side. Notice we have it brush editor and this is brush editor is allowed us to add and modify those custom brushes. Like if you look right here, we have a different type of the brush. Some of this moving, some inflate. For example, if we take inflate and let's go increase size of our brush. Look what's happening. See how it's deflating down. Actually, I need inverse. Yes, right here, I click invert. So let's uninvert and look what's happening. See how it is bulging them up. Kind of look cool in this case. And of course we can reduce a little bit and we can go from the size and notice what we did right here. We click on the side. Of course, warning come. We have polygons. Remember, I tell you before when you use the 3D, it's kind of crazy become about polygons. So, but it's okay. We can fix this after. But you can see it's creating overhand hanging now, which is now we're out of the two dimensional, because with a gray map you have a two dimensional. You cannot have it all overhanging with just a black and white with a high field maps. When you have it overhanging, it's when it's the topology start affecting and now you have this extra polygon. Now you become too true three dimensional. Of course, we can say force it two dimensional. See, and it's gone. Now we're back to our original two dimensional thing. So it's meaning the cone only pixel above can be only shifted, cannot be on top of another pixel as a reference to the map. Okay. So we look on this brushes and you can create your own brushes. You know, uh, let's disable now 2Ds. Again, right here, you'll notice if we disable only here showing what we can do with 2Ds. We enable and we have a 3D brush. So this is brushes we can design. We can create very crazy, very cool brushes. And I do like create them. For example, I create brush like myth or fall down. So you just stamp it like almost your stamp with a brush around. It's a very, very fun place, very fun to do. And as we speak on the brush, so we're going down below right here. You can save it, you can preload it, you can configure, and you have it brushes mode one. You'll notice it is affecting sculpting or affecting terrain shape by itself. We can also paint materials. So remember I told you we can take material, apply it to this, and you can also paint materials in specific areas like right here. I can have a different materials and I can just paint over in the areas where I want it. You can also mix paint materials with a brush. So in this case, if we're going and click invert and as I'm going down, you see how I'm going down. I can also remove in this case or I can go and increase and as I'm increasing, it's also painting new materials. So in this case, you can create like, for example, grass and you can paint hill. And as your hill growing, more grass material will apply this. So it's kind of very cool tool. So you play around like almost some sculpting other ones. Um, next, also you have it, your freeze. So it will help you just freeze specific areas of your map uh, of your terrain. If you don't want to modify this as well. Below we have it. <laughs> Era brush effect. It's what happened here. It's kind of smooth and I like to use. You can have it harder effect. You can increase radius of your brush as well. On the side, see those icons? They're representing uh, the touch sensitive. If you use it like Vicom pad and you have it how hard you press, so they will affect this is what they are for. So if you use Vicom, you can actually touch sensitive, pressure sensitive, apply to this specific 
element for example flow fallout of radius if you enable you will apply to this constraint to clipping range we already look on this before when we can slow down and it will also apply to your material so you can paint says i don't want uh for example the rocks materials go above riverbed when you do it you can lock and you can paint this way next of course we have our materials which already we've done and you can save preload and those materials you can modify them as well as enable painting okay next let's look on those tabs we have a graph this is apply for the function editor which is a little bit more advanced and we do we will definitely look on this because it's a one of the powerful things inside the view you can always access by double time clicking and you can access two specific functions if you want preload procedures here remember i told you you can overlay some procedures over this or you can edit functions by right click and selecting and this has allowed you to preview all of these nodes and rearrange them don't be scared if it's look um, too messy or a lot of information as we're going along you will kind of start understanding and afterwards they will look like oh it's so simple you know we'll go this as well we have it some mapping mode which is allowed you to select different and mapping mode will apply on which point going other ways for example right here you can see how they're going you also can modify those filters by right clicking and change some of this mapping modes and you can see as i'm changing see how they change right here so this mapping mode changing and applied so you kind of give it the altitude versus how close it's to the center of the point because right here is our high center of point see how i'm did if i bring this down now we have it on the middle kind of crater so think about this is center of our terrain and as we're going to the center of terrain we are changing well, for example we can say you know i don't want anything closer there and then we can kind of just like almost move everything and you can preview how it's affecting okay again those options that are a little bit more advanced will work with them more as we're working on the project but it's right here mapping mode object parametric this is meaning it's take all the size of the object and just apply to this you can change to the different like world world parametric or object world this will take in calculation all world and apply your effect to that we don't need to do this because otherwise it just will run and get it as well we can increase vertical gain how much it will go up uh, we also have additional effects and this is a little bit different from erosion effects they're more legacy they're done in original vu some time ago and here for example if you want you can click diffuse and as you clicking you can see how it's diffusing and make it smoother smoother you have it also glacier much more effect happening dissolving we can specify hardness of the rock so it will create more lines of dissolving and under we have it effect like a greedy one pebbles gravel and you can see how it's add here you can add peaks terrain stairs fir trees fir trees is actually just the peaks but if we do this far far away yes like for example this is located on the hill far away in distance those peaks will become look like a trees actually very easy very resource inattensive to create forest far away forest again this is more as the uh, legacy type elements so you can still can do this with other erosion but this is very resource in a tense and they just apply it and done so this is kind of very nice to use okay let's switch to the procedure terrain at this point and in procedures you'll notice we have the zones zones will help us to work on specific segment of the terrain because with procedure terrain it is created by fractal function and you don't really have it control over some how its shape look but here's a very cool things because we can also just take small piece and work on this because sometimes like infinity terrain it's infinity terrain and maybe you just want on one area you want to create a flat area maybe for your space um port you know something like this that will the zones will work also in infinity and they just straightforward you just add 
select element where you want it like right here and you can see now we have this zone right here this is element that i just cut off we can preview of course to entire terrain by clicking and here we have a zone and we can click on entire terrain and preview those segments so it does work with segments um i need to give you a little bit warning about some of those elements sometimes depending on your video card your application may crush it and that is a problem what i find with almost any time when you work with a lot of polygons and you create all of this stuff the system maybe crush it and it's have very good options to recover this so what i recommend for you to do go to file options and inside the file option click on a scene and as seen right here, you can notice it's have it enable after savings. Be sure this is enable, click enable after savings, and you can save how many minutes you want to save and how many after saves versions you want to do. If you want to reduce amount of time of the savings, for example, every five minutes, then you probably want to increase the of how many saves because for example, 10 saves, it will give me 150 minutes of work. And if I know I work a little bit longer, maybe I want to do this way. Same, you can have it safe send after render. I recommend this check as well, just in case, because anytime when you work with a lot of polygons, you work with video graphics, with intensive GPU or CPU usage, you possibly can just application can crush it. it it's happened to anything it's happened to photoshop to me all the time and everything it doesn't matter but best way if you have a preventive kind of this options i will highly recommend enable them some of them will be by default enable but you can also go and enable by yourself okay so we'll click ok and this is about all what i want to kind of overview over our terrain our next video we're doing another hands-on project where we're going to use actually and creating the pirate island i think it's the best way to do this just a practicing and create and utilize some of the terrain editor of course this is a intermediate kind of beginning to our introduction terrain editor it's much more there because remember we have all of this huge world that we can work with the function editors with specific parametric uh, properties where you can just have it fun by just going for example and preload it different type of terrains based on the functions on the fractals and those is so much fun to work with with them trust me it's a you'll have a blast doing this well thank you for watching this video and we'll see you next time